Okay. This is a video about wind production, wind P90s, wind P50s, and there's going to be a similar video next about solar and then about hydro. I like comparing all of these uh, different things. Now, I should have... Uh, actually, just let me pause for a minute. Well, if you look at my website or my Google Drive, you can find uh, slides on IPP analysis. And the big thing here is when we look at renewable versus non-renewable plants, the capacity factor, or the production, is the big deal. And then I have some simple kind of things about heat rates, dispatchable that I appear to spell wrong. And here is the big subject. All right, I did found this. Don't ignore this. Okay, there is none. There is no risk mitigation in renewable for capacity factor or production risk. That's the problem. Okay, and then I have these little diagrams that I think the way you should really make a diagram is start always with the, the PPA contract and move from there. This ridiculous thing, that, oh, let's do this, 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 or oh, let's start with the lender's contract. You start with this, go around to the EPC and O&M, and then see if you go around the loan contract at the end. So I have an example of a connection between the different contracts. They all start with the PPA contract, and then wonderful kind of examples of Enron, who was very good at making the contracts, but then the contracts all blew up because they were so absurdly uneconomic. Okay, so I got off track a little bit. Sorry about that. Don't yell at me about that. I didn't spend too much time on that. The idea here is that we need to understand resource risk, and we need to see how it really works, and we kind of try to rely on consulting studies, but then taking a look at real data might be really interesting. So, um, let's, uh, how, how about this? We'll select this whole uh, thing. I don't know why, uh, just a minute. When I copied it, well, you know, we don't need all this crap up here anymore. Okay. Minus, and we don't need this one. And let's uh, let's put the name here. And I don't need these. I don't even need these uh, kind of code. I'll put a code number in here. Okay. So let's let's go through the whole thing and all ds. Let's sort by uh, column A. But uh, let's say we have headers. And, and we're not going to sort by column A, excuse me. We're going to start sort by the, the uh, column C, the mover. Okay? All right. And what we'll do is, okay, we have some stuff that has no prime movers. That sucks. Okay. And then we, I hope I didn't miss any of the, here's all the hydro plant. Here's all the internal combustion engines. Here, here are all the solar plants. That's projects, I suppose I should say. And here are, luckily, we have a whole lot of wind projects. Oh, how cool is this? So let me pause this, and I'm going to copy this into another file. Okay, so I copied, I just left, I copied, I deleted, excuse me, get some words. I deleted all the... Uh, types of projects that were not wind. So there'll be another database. And I'll show you where this database will be on the website, but it will just be in the, the wind resource section, and then I'll have a database on the solar and all of that. Okay, so how about we'll make this just a little bit smaller. And we can see we didn't have much wind projects, many wind projects in the 70s. Oh, we started one in the 80s. Oh, look at that. It had some negative production. 
don't know what really that was. And then we get to uh, the 90s. It's not so good. 95, we start to have a few. That's, that's a long history. Not many, you see. Uh, not many at all. Okay, and then we start to get into the year two, uh, uh, 2001, and then now we start to get some real uh, data, okay? And some of these data, this data, we get, we, we get some kind of long-term data so we can study some of this data. How wonderful is this? You've got to believe this is wonderful. So let's just do some, uh, some of our basic kind of of, of analysis. Now, what we might want to do is uh, uh, let's first put selected plant. Now, if you would just like uh, multiple selections, uh, we'll, we'll show you how to do that. You have to make kind of a, a little macro for this. And uh, oh, I've done it, but I can't really remember how to do it. So. Okay, it'll be good practice to, to do this again. So for this, all we do is put a code number, and then I think, um, you know, the best, not maybe perhaps not the best, but a reasonable way to do this might be to just make a developer tab. Now, this is what is infuriating me, is that when you use this developer tab in Excel 2016 like I'm using and you know the nice thing would be to do this but we really shouldn't so let's let's just get the whole thing but let's start in the first column and so we'll uh, our code number will show what the row number is I guess I had to uh, do the famous back and forth I seem to come out do that, okay, and uh, where I was going is is the graph, you know, the and how about we'll make it a little bit uh, bigger, okay, so this is just, hmm. let's make it 40 perhaps, okay, and we can start to see this. Now you might also want to Put a spinner box that does the same sort of thing because uh, you'll do this now. I kind of made a little mistake just now in in my uh, uh, I don't know this. We should see. Do we have five thousand plants? Okay, let's see how many we have. Here's my mistake. I need to describe what we're going to do. Okay, and let's get our total plants first. So our count is 900. We have a thousand different wind farms, which a lot of them don't have all the data and blah, 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 but that's pretty good. Okay, this will just allow it. Now, I think what we need to do is, is this will be kind of our codes, uh, etc. I think what we need to do is the following. We need to do some analysis. And for this wind farm, let's put the name. Uh, let's put the uh, average uh, production. And then let's put the standard deviation uh, production. I think there was a man named Gauss. He's a famous, I don't know, the most famous statistician is. There's also a man named Fisher who is extremely famous. But Gauss said, there's this thing called a normal distribution, and all you have to do is know the average and the standard deviation. And then we can get the P99, and we can get the P95, and we can get the P90, and we can get the P75. So we can see um, just how much the actual deviation, this is not some theoretical sort of uh, uh, analysis. We can also look at whether we've got a normal distribution. We can make a frequency uh, 
uh, distribution. Uh, I would think that anybody who's studying wind and would want to get this sort of thing and do these these types of analysis. Ultimately, what we'd really like to do, and I'm not going to open the file. Well, maybe I will. I'll open this this file that we looked at. In I'll find it on hopefully find it on my uh, drive, which is in the electricity materials. You go to renewable energy. You go to financial analysis reports, you go to the one called FPL, Standard and Poor's, and there was this wonderful little snippet of information that really is a wonderful kind of thing that shows you, and I wonder if we can even find these plants. I really want to find these, but we can see, well, here's the, here's what they said the difference, but here's the P50 and the P90, and then the standard and poor is even in, in their brilliance, put the percent difference between the P50 and the P90s and all this. That was before the project was, you know, uh, put into uh, service. And then we, so what we can do is put the, the, the P99 to average and the P, P95 to the average, P90 to the average, and P75 to the average. We could kind of compute this almost, we could, we could really do this very quickly for every single power plant. Okay. I'll have to think about that, and then we can put the standard. I think we, up here we might want to put the, the standard deviation divided by the average. Okay, so now the, the uh, uh, I think we should go over here and put our selected plant. Okay, and then we can... Uh, uh, take our, 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 our periods, you know, here, okay, and then we'll copy that all the way across, and we'll use Shift-Control-R and all of that, and then right here we'll have the, the, the selected plant, and then we'll have to do a little adjustment, because if we have zero um, uh, production, we don't want to have that computed in the in the in the average of the standard deviation. Okay, so I'm going to while this is my new philosophy. This video is supposed to be a lot less about Excel and a lot more about the analysis. So I'm going to pause uh, the vis video and just work through some of these and come back and tell you a little trick here and there. What what had to be done, but the big deal is to be able to take any of these uh, product, any of these power plants, and kind of get a nice little graph and show what our P90 actual and our P50 actual is for any of these for any of these power plants. All right, and. Uh, so just uh, give me a minute. Now this, this file has 1.5 megabytes, so it's a pretty large file. It's not nearly as large as, as, as the other pl uh, projects, so I think we can, we can kind of do some of these in here. All right, just give me a minute. Okay, so with a little bit of match and index, so far, what I've been able to do, and there are a lot of uh, these projects that don't uh, projects that don't have the full data. Okay, but the good news is you can kind of look at all of these things. Here's the first one, one of the first ones, and let's look at a couple of ones. See, we have some ones that don't have data, so. Here's this Chamberlain wind project operating since the year 2000. This one you'd be worried about. Oh, what happened? It looks like maybe there was some problems with the birds or something. I don't know. It looks like 
maybe dinosaurs attacked it. Um, this this one, you know, there was some variation, but I'm just looking at these, and especially these ones with wonderful long data. Oops, there's something bad happened. Here, this was an interesting one. We had some problems with the start. Uh, this data we better ignore. Um, uh, and then, you know, as you get into the later ones, I'm just pressing the spinner button. Um, uh, you, can, uh, you can see how the graph is completely flexible. So it just... Uh, It just graphs these ones. Now, what I probably should have done is exclude plants that don't have any... Uh, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to exclude plants that don't have any data at all. Okay, so we'll have a lot less data, but we can really see it. When we have this kind of data, we only have two years of data, which is not nearly as good, so we'll have to be a little patient and wait maybe a year or two and... And we can start to really see some more analysis, but it looks like the deviation across a year, that's what we're going to do, is not so much. Now, to do this, we got the row from our, our little spinner box, and then we just said, well, let's get the, the, the code of the plant by looking at the row, let's get the index. So we just, what, because we started with the whole thing, the index is this one, and then, and then what I did, oops, which, which, uh, plant am I on? Let, let's look at a plant kind of in the beginning. All right. Princeton Wind Farm, okay? And then we, we just use a conditional formatting to show which, uh, which uh, uh, project we've selected, okay? And then if you want to see when the production starts, this is a tricky one. You use an indirect a function and you go down to row 10 and match it as soon as the 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 data is is a little bit different than zero okay and that's a match without an exact match okay and then you can get the production start and then we go to the up here start with the production start and the key thing and then you put the code number and all that and the key thing is on this you use an index that looks at the entire row and the entire column, and you put a true or false whether you should include the date. Okay, so that's the general uh, procedure. And uh, I think what we need to do is now do a little bit of uh, annual analysis. Now, the, uh, the problem is, in, in, and this is a good example, if, if we don't have a full year of data, we don't really want to include the data. Other we could, otherwise, we could just use a sum if uh, uh, function. Okay, so, so let's... Uh, uh, I'm going to... Uh, uh, actually, I'm going to stop the video right now and just call this part one, because this is a long enough uh, video. All right.